Hello and welcome to part 4 of this series of videos on rectangular waveguides. In this video we'll be using algebra to find a lot of different quantities like the cutoff frequency and phase velocity. I've given a list of all the quantities that we are going to find. Waveguides won't guide electromagnetic waves that are below a certain frequency and this frequency is called a cutoff frequency. The waves are still guided but with a huge attenuation as they go through the guide. Waves with frequencies higher than the cutoff frequency are guided without loss. Now we're going to find the values of the partial derivatives with respect to x, y and z in terms of numbers so that numbers may be substituted for the partial derivative functions. Here is the equation for the electric field in the z-direction or axial direction of the waveguide given everywhere in the waveguide as a function of x, y and z. We are now going to find the second derivative of this electric field with respect to x. Substituting this value in gives us this and evaluating this expression gives us this. So this quantity is equal to this number multiplied by the electric field in the z-direction. Therefore we can say that this partial derivative is equal to this expression which may be calculated to be a number. We can follow a similar procedure to find out what this partial derivative operator is equal to. We'll substitute this expression into it. Evaluating this differential equation gives us this expression which is equal to this expression. So this partial derivative operator is equal to this expression which may be evaluated to be a number. Lastly we'll evaluate this partial differential equation. Substituting this expression for EZ into it gives us this differential equation. Evaluating this equation gives us this expression which is equal to EZ multiplied by this number. So this partial derivative operator is equal to this number which is the propagation constant squared. So now we're ready to find all of the variables of the waveguide. We'll start off with this wave equation that we've derived earlier in part 1. Expanding the Laplacian operator gives us this equation and we have all of these small equations that we can substitute into it. Substituting these equations into it gives us this equation. We can divide this equation by EZ because it is non-zero. Then we can make gamma into the subject of this equation giving us this. We'll take the positive square root in this case because gamma is positive when attenuating. Gamma can only be a pure real or pure imaginary number because it is the square root of a real number. We'll let it be an imaginary number and so beta will be the propagation constant for it being a wave that propagates as a sinusoid function in the waveguide with zero attenuation. In the case that gamma is pure imaginary then this expression must be negative and therefore less than zero. So the cutoff radial frequency omega c is given by this expression when gamma squared is less than zero. Making omega c the subject of this equation gives us this formula for the cutoff radial frequency. The cutoff frequency is related to the cutoff radial frequency with this equation. So after substituting this equation in we get this equation. After simplifying this equation we get this formula for the cutoff frequency of the waveguide. So these are the three important equations that we've derived. It can be shown that the lowest or fundamental mode occurs for TE when M is equal to 1 and N is equal to 0. Substituting these values in gives us these equations for the fundamental mode. So now to find the wavelength of the wave in the waveguide. We get this equation from the previous equations 
that we've derived earlier. Rearranging it gives us this. We can substitute omega c in to get this equation. We can factorise this expression. And then we can get beta to be equal to this. We can manipulate this expression to be this. The guide wavelength is equal to this. Since beta is equal to the wave number k, then the wavelength in the guide would be equal to this. The wavelength in the guide is also equal to this in terms of the radial frequencies. Simplifying this equation gives us this equation. We can also write the equation out like this, separating it into two fractions. I'll just write it out again up here. This is the wavelength of the wave outside the waveguide, which is also equal to this. So this is what the wavelength in the guide is equal to in terms of the free space wavelength. Now to find the phase velocity of the electromagnetic wave in the waveguide, which is the velocity at which it looks like it's moving, if you could see it. It is given by this equation. Substituting these values into it gives us this, which gives us this. So the phase velocity is equal to this small equation. K is equal to beta, so this equation is true. And this is what the phase velocity is equal to in terms of the radial frequencies. We can simplify this equation a bit more and make it look like two fractions. This is the phase velocity in terms of the ratios of the two radial frequencies and it is greater than the speed of light c. This is because the velocity of the energy of the wave is not the phase velocity. I have also used the equation to find c in terms of mu and epsilon. Now to find the group velocity or the velocity of the energy of the wave in the waveguide. This is the definition of the group velocity. The propagation constant gamma is equal to kz and may be substituted in for it from now on. And the partial differential equation may be rewritten like this. This is what gamma is equal to for this frequency. I wrote it out as a bracketed expression raised to the power of a half to make it easier to follow when I differentiate it. When we substitute it into the differential equation, we get this expression, which may be simplified to be this. And gamma can be substituted back into this equation. We can also rewrite it as this fraction. We can then factorise this fraction like this. And then we can substitute the phase velocity back into it. We can also substitute the speed of light c into it. I'll just rewrite the definition of the group velocity. Substituting the last expression into it gives us this. Rearranging this equation gives us this important equation. The product of the phase and group velocities is equal to c squared. And so we can calculate what the group velocity is in terms of the phase velocity that we calculated earlier. Now we get this very important formula for the group velocity expressed in terms of the radial frequencies. We can also get this formula for the group velocity in terms of the frequencies, the frequency of the wave in the waveguide and the cutoff frequency of the waveguide.